let's get a consortium. Uh, as I said, I put feelers out, I'm in touch with uh, billionaires who are interested in football. Some of them never thought of owning a football club, but I am pulling on their tail. I've been asked by various groups to be their spokesperson, which I'm happy to be. But what I've said to each and every one is this, the only way we can make an impact is for all of the fan groups to unite as one body with one spokesperson dealing with the Glazer and their executives directly. I would gladly gift him my blueprint too and say, look, take it, it's yours. Let's restore Manchester United to where it should be. Please, let's meet, let's sit down. Let's really see if we can talk to the Glazers and say, look, they can't be happy with their own position and the, the view the fans have of them. It is not at all enjoyable and they must want themselves for things to change. I have nothing against them personally. I just want Manchester United to be in the hands of ownership that really understands Manchester United, what it represents around the world, most of all what it means uh, to we Manchester United fans. And I'll play my part. I will keep talking to people. I will keep rallying. But the fans must come together. Let's be civilised. Let's be professional, dignified, and commercially proper. That way, we will achieve our result, and we will get a new regime change. Because at the end of the day, John, everything is for sale. Fighting Talk, coming up the full exclusive interview with Michael Knighton. This is a rallying call for fans worldwide to unite and demand regime change at Manchester United Football Club. For that to happen, there must be a consortium with the billions of pounds needed to buy out the Glazers. And Knighton is ready to be the catalyst to make that happen. I've got a few contacts, I've spoken to several people, I've been approached by several people that I've known from the commercial world. Uh, they've asked uh, about my own blueprint too, they've said, Michael, would I get involved? Yes, I'm happy to support any of you. Uh, obviously, we do need the clout and magnitude of a Jim Ratcliffe to prize away this football club from the current ownership. You're going to need billions of pounds. And after all, as I said, it is the greatest, most magical football club in the world. It's worth paying for, but we need the level of Jim Ratcliffe and others to achieve that goal. And I will be doing my damnedest to pull those people together. Before I show you the full interview with Michael Knighton, let's review just how we got here. A year ago, the Glazers tried to steal football by setting up a breakaway Super League. Football supporters across the board united to kill the breakaway at birth. At Old Trafford, the protest by Manchester United fans forced a postponement of our match with Liverpool, historically the biggest in the Premier League. That triggered an apology by our American owners and a pledge to make sweeping changes after 17 years of neglect. Full credit to the Manchester United Supporters Trust for making impressive demands that the Glazers accepted. Duncan Drasto, Ian Sterling and all their team at Must have done their best. But a year later, little has changed and what turned out to be second-class shares offered to the fans will not dilute the Glazers' control by any significant amount. In the meantime, our team has hit rock bottom after a decade of mismanagement by the owners. That's why we've seen a new wave of protests led by the 1958 group, a passionate response led by younger fans who desperately want the Glazers out. But we all know, protests alone are not going to force regime change. That's why I've been urging my good friend Michael Knighton to come back and help rescue the club for a second time. Ignore the fake news fueled by disgraced media tycoon, the late Robert Maxwell, who tried to discredit Knighton and forced him to rip up his contract that gave him legal ownership of the world's biggest football club 33 years ago. Make no mistake, Michael Knighton is the real deal, and he definitely had the money in place back in 1989. But Michael loves our beautiful game, and he acted for the good of Manchester United, by taking a place on the board instead, while he oversaw his financial blueprint that rescued a failing business. 
Truth is, Michael Knighton laid the foundations for Manchester United Football Club to become the biggest sporting brand on the planet. And he did that without taking a single penny out of the football club, not even expenses. How ironic that his visionary blueprint was ultimately exploited by the Glazer family, who take out millions and millions every year. And the Glazers invest absolutely zero in our football club from their own personal funds. So we need new owners with deeper pockets. That's why it's time for change, and why I'm proud to bring Michael Knighton back to the table. Michael, it was brilliant to share the experience of watching our boys win the FA Youth Cup again at Old Trafford on Wednesday night. We even lifted the banner for the class of 22 above our heads as we celebrated the victory. But of course, you were there when our famous class of 92 won the Youth Cup. You were on the board, of course, running the club. So how do we go about rebuilding the club now? Well, that's a good question, John. Um, new ownership would be a great start uh, to rebuild Manchester United. And without new ownership, sadly, I'm now of the view that unless we have regime change, I doubt very much whether we will ever recapture those glory days of Alex Ferguson, the board, when I was there, setting those foundation stones with real football people, with real Manchester United fans. Yes, of course, the commercial side was inevitable. Without a very successful commercial side, you're never going to uh, achieve what you hope to achieve. Manchester United is the greatest football club in the world. All respect to Real Madrid and Barcelona and Uwe and Munching Gladbach, you can name them all. Manchester United is, it's the magic of the club, it's the greatest. We need to rebuild it. The stadium is in a poor state of repair. And, you know, I've heard these platitudes from the current owners and they sound hollow to me at the moment. We need to go back to the starting position and rebuild this club. And the first point of reference for that re-establishment of where we should be is to have new ownership. And that's what we must do. That's great news for Man United fans. I know you've already been approached by some fan groups who want you to lead this campaign. How important is it that everyone is now singing from the same hymn sheet? It's absolutely critical. And you're right, John, uh, as you've seen through my Twitter site and, and, and uh, the website, uh, I've been asked by various groups to be their spokesperson, which I'm happy to be. But what I've said to each and every one is this. Look, the Manchester United Brotherhood must come together as a unified body. It is pointless being uh, fraction, fractionated, and if we're all fractured and not singing from the same hymn sheet, it's really not going to have much sway either way. The Glazers are not the sort of people that really will pay much attention to uh, a group of fans here, a group of fans there. They're hard-nosed business people. They will just carry on doing what they're doing. The only way we can make an impact is for all of the fan groups to unite as one body with one spokesperson dealing with the Glazer and their executives directly, dealing with the Glazer regime and saying, look, more than a year ago now, you heard the protests, you heard the dissatisfaction, you said you were going to do this, that and the other. Yes, there's been some modest, very modest movements in the right direction, but to say they are modest would be a massive understatement. We're really at status quo. The club hasn't progressed. In fact, it's actually gone backwards in my view. So yes, we need a unified body to say, look, the fans are the football club at the end of the day. The fans deserve outstanding executive management, outstanding leadership, both from the playing perspective and from the commercial perspective, the whole management of the club. At least the current executive team has been tweaked. Mr. Woodward has left. I understand uh, Judd has left. 
And that's a good start in my view. I would never put investment bankers, former chartered accountants in charge of a football club. So at least that's come to fruition. But until we have new ownership, until we have the right people really forcing this club forward, I'm afraid we're just going to have more of the same. I know we've got a new manager to look forward to next year, Eric Ten Hag. Let's hope that he can do what he's done uh, at Ajax and so on. But you know, you say the class of 92, and you and I enjoyed that match just on Wednesday evening to see the class of 22. Well, you need a new Alex Ferguson. Let's hope that this new manager is in a similar mold. And let's hope we get a new executive team like we had all those years ago that really do understand Manchester United, what it means to the world of football as well as our own fans. So my view is new regime change, people who understand football, let's get fans really involved. I know we've had some government intervention, which I am um, happy with and I called for that myself, but I would never be happy with politicians running football. That's what we don't want. Uh, that would be disastrous. Uh, there's no question about that. But this fan-led reform, I like how the politicians have called it fan-led. It's not fan-led at all, really. This is government politician-led. So that is a red flag to me. We need genuine football people leading these reforms. And let's hope that we do have a bill of government that actually does protect these wonderful community assets right throughout the football pyramid, because I hope that is what the government paper is trying to achieve. And I hope that the recommendations that have been uh, put forward are implemented, but under the management of fan groups, together with footballing executives who just love the game. That's my simple view. You say we need to speak with one voice, and at the moment that's your voice, so it sounds like it's time to start speaking to potential investors. Can we find a consortium to buy our football club? Absolutely. Look, um, Chelsea have just been apparently uh, considering several bids of well over £4 billion. Uh, it's going to be sold. Uh, we all know that. Uh, one buyer or potential buyer there in particular, Jim Ratcliffe, who actually is a Manchester United supporter, and Jim Ratcliffe would be absolutely ideal. And he does have the financial clout. He is a football man. He's also a brilliant businessman. His motivations would be unquestioned in my view. Uh, if we could get the likes of Jim Ratcliffe to buy Manchester United, that would be a wonderful solution. I watched a TV interview with him only a few days ago where he said, look, I'm here for long term if my Chelsea bid is um, successful and he doesn't need to take any money out of any football club he makes enough money from his chemical production empire and he's actually said that himself we don't take we don't need to take money out of any football club we buy it's those sort of people that you want on board people who really love football want to serve the community want to serve the fans and jim ratcliffe that type of individual would be perfect I've got a few contacts. I've spoken to several people. I've been approached by several people that I've known from the commercial world. Uh, they've asked uh, about my own blueprint too. They said, Michael, would I get involved? Yes, I'm happy to support any of you. Uh, obviously, we do need the clout and magnitude of a Jim Ratcliffe to prize away this football club from the current ownership. You're going to need billions of pounds. And after all, as I said at the beginning of this interview, John, it is the greatest, most magical football club in the world. It's worth paying for, but we need the level of Jim Ratcliffe and others to achieve that goal. And I will be doing my damnedest to pull those people together. You mentioned Blueprint 2. We'll come back to that in just a moment. But what about Sir Jim Ratcliffe? How do we get Sir Jim on board? Sir Jim Ratcliffe is the man. Um, a little bit of confusion about the precise Chelsea position at the moment. Jim came in very late with his own bid. Uh, that's because he's a cautious man. You know, he's a very clever, uh, very cautious, a very sensible man. You will look at every 
He will look at any business proposition from all perspectives. That's why he's so successful. So I think that was the reason for his delayed uh, tabling of his bid, because they really analyzed this proposition from all perspectives. That's the way it should be. But yes, I will get a message to uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe and his people. Please, let's meet, let's sit down. Let's really see if we can talk to the Glazers and say, look, they can't be happy with their own position and the, the view the fans have of them. It is not at all enjoyable and they must want themselves for things to change. They've made, as I said earlier, these platitudes of change, but nothing has really happened. The share scheme they put forward, in my view, lacks merit. Uh, it's simply, uh, uh, you, you're not really placing genuine legitimate power into the, pan, uh, into the hands of the fans. If they had said, look, here's 25.1% of the real A voting shares, pro rata and pro gratis, free gratis, I'd have said, wow, they are serious. If I'd have seen some intelligent, sensible, reasonable fans placed on the board of directors, if I'd have seen those types of initiatives being put on the table, I'd have said, you know what, these are serious people now. They do want genuine change. It's not happened, John. And you know what, it won't happen. It won't happen with the Glazer family, with all respect to them. Uh, you know, I have nothing against them personally. I just want Manchester United to be in the hands of ownership that really understands Manchester United, what it represents around the world, most of all, what it means uh, to we Manchester United fans. We're not pinning all our hopes on Sir Jim Ratcliffe, of course, but he's already come out and said he wants to buy a football club by making his bid for Chelsea. He did say Manchester United isn't for sale, but if he sees all our fans are united behind a campaign like this, do you think it's going to persuade him to change direction? He's obviously got the money. He said he grew up as a United fan. He's born near the ground. Manchester United fans want him to buy the football club. Do you think it's going to help if we've got a unified voice led by yourself supporting this campaign? Well, let's hope so. Let's hope so. I mean, look, Sir Jim Ratcliffe uh, has all the criteria, has all the credibility, has all the characteristics vis-a-vis -vis his personality, to be the perfect owner of Manchester United. He, he's a Mancunian. He was born, he's bred in Manchester. He has said that he's a Manchester United fan, and I believe that. I'm sure he is. He's also obviously a football fan. You don't put four and a half billion pound on the table, whatever it is, <laughs> to buy a football club if you're not a football fan. And he's not just in it for status. Does he need any more status? Here's a man who's achieved the highest echelons of commercial enterprise, extremely successful. He's a knight of the realm for his uh, services and his brilliance in the commercial world. So he's not chasing status. I believe he's a genuine football lover and he would be the perfect solution. Let's hope he comes forward. Uh, I would gladly gift him my blueprint too, like I gifted my blueprint one to the Martin Edwards and board all those years ago. And look where that took the football club. My Blueprint 2 would take it even to a higher plane commercially than it's on now. And I know there will be those, oh, impossible, impossible. No, it's not. You know, this, play, this, this, this great institution being managed by uh, accountants and let me tell you, in, former investment bankers don't tell me that these people know how to run Manchester United. They clearly don't. So yes, let's get Sir Jim Ratcliffe in, in frame. Let's try and uh, tug on the tail of the tiger and hope that he will come forward. Uh, and I, I would gladly gift him my blueprint too and say, look, take it, it's yours. Let's restore Manchester United to where it should be. Not this pretty miserable, pretty average. This is the worst team I've seen playing they're all excellent, outstanding, world-class players. But I must tell you, they're not playing as a team. Uh, we've had four or five managers. They've all failed. We need a seismic change now. And unless we have new ownership, unless we start to win silverware, unless we're never out the top two, unless we join the ranks of 
Manchester City and Liverpool, our two greatest competitors on the planet, unless we're up there, not only forging a wedge, but topping that triumvirate, it should be Manchester United, Manchester City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham, and the rest. Uh, yes, of course, these are arrogant statements. No one has a divine right to be the top of the tree. But you know, Manchester United is dear to so many people around the world. And it means so much to many people around the world. There is no club really on the planet with the magic, uh, with the trials, the tribulations, with the travesties. We've mentioned the horrific Munich disaster all those years ago in 1958. The Busby Babes, the Alex Ferguson era, the wonder of it all. We need to capture this. And yes, people say, well, it's only football. Yeah, well, it's football, and that means a lot to a lot of people. And it's a very, very important community asset. And it's a football asset of the first magnitude. So yes, so Jim, I hope you're going to see this interview. You can have my telephone number anytime. Let's sit around the table. Let's just get him motivated to buy Manchester United. That's fantastic. You've talked about Blueprint 2 and the possibility of making Manchester United all-powerful once again. That's optimistic after what feels like our worst Premier League season. But of course, you've earned the right to talk with confidence as your original Blueprint helped change the face of football. Well, that's very kind of you to say so, John. And at least the media are far more kinder to me than they were. Yes, every single tenet of that Blueprint 1 came to fruition. I have to pay credit to... Martin Edwards and the commercial team at the time. Martin did take my blueprint, which I gifted to him, and every single tenet in that blueprint came to fruition. We transformed ourselves from a massively underperforming entity commercially and underperforming on the field at the time to those golden years, the Ferguson golden years from 1989 onwards. And I enjoyed, as you know, three years there, winning that wonderful silverware. You know, the uh, Ferguson, I was there when he won his first trophy, the FA Cup, then the Football League Cup, then the European Cup Winners' Cup, the European Super Cup, and of course the FA Youth Cup, which again, it brought the hairs on the back of my head standing to attention again, just on Wednesday, when I stood in the Stretford end, looking at those bright youngsters carrying the day. Again, I have to say, I, I was an, a non-loser on that day because had Nottingham Forest clinched it, yes, I would have, of course, well, I want my club, Manchester, but Nottingham Forest as a boy, I supported, along with Derby County. It was a thoroughly enjoyable evening and a well-deserved win for our youngsters. So the future is bright. You know, you don't win the FA Youth Cup without having some bright youngsters. And there looked one or two bright young stars on that field of play. And I was thrilled to see them. It brought back wonderful memories. And uh, the class of 92, look what they achieved, look where they are today. The class of 2022 could well do exactly the same. But I would like to see them marching forward with this new manager. Let's hope that uh, Eric Ten Hag can perform We'll see if he's a new Alex Ferguson. Let's hope we can have a regime change in a polite and a dignified and a professional manner. That's critical. Yes, fans are going to protest. Of course they are. They're unhappy. They have a right to protest. But you know, I can never condone uh, violence and, and um, absurd pro protests. Let's be civilized. Let's be professional, dignified and commercially proper. That way we will achieve our result and we will get a new regime change. Because at the end of the day, John, everything is for sale. And Manchester United should be for sale. Sir Jim Ratcliffe is the type of individual that has the financial clout to give what every Manchester United fan wants, new owners. So come on, Sir Jim, uh, let's see if we can motivate you to make some inroads into bringing our dream a little bit closer. And of course, if Sir Jim doesn't come to the table with the money, there are other people about. Perhaps 
that could be a way of leveraging Sir Jim's interest. We've already seen foreign control going overseas, with Americans owning our three most famous clubs, Manchester United, Liverpool and Arsenal. And it now seems like Chelsea too. Manchester City, of course, have got foreign ownership. And Newcastle have also sold out. Meantime, it feels like the Super League threat will never go away. Foreign owners obviously see there's a lot more potential. You've said so yourself. Manchester United is currently falling well short of its real potential. If Sir Jim doesn't get behind the bid, we always run the risk, and I'm not being anti-foreigner, that we lose control of our football club forever. as a British community asset that fans could have a stake in. Well, you're absolutely right, John. Even my own local team, Derby County, you know, when I was a small child of six, you know, going to the baseball ground, as it used to be, now Pride Park, of course, uh, and, and look at my own club, a, another great club, very dear to my heart, Derby County, the Rams. You know, I love the Rams. Uh, on par with Manchester. You know, Manchester United, the Rams are my teams. Along with, of course, let's not forget little Carlisle United. Uh, they have to play a part somewhere. Sheffield Wednesday, you know that I'm a multifaceted fan. But look, my blood will always be red with Manchester United. There is overseas interest. And as I said, Derby County is just about to be sold uh, to an American, as you say. But there are foreign investors out there because the attraction of football as a global sport, it is the most brilliant and wonderful and captivating sport on the planet. Yes, of course, I'm biased. You know, tennis players and rugby players would argue against that, but it is. And the statistics prove it. The statistics prove that Man uh, not only Manchester United, but the Premier League is the most coveted, the most watched sporting uh, league in the world. So yeah, of course, there are Far Eastern interests. Uh, we won't mention Russia anymore because of the travesty that's happening uh, with that great country at the moment. Uh, let's hope that those horrific stories soon end. And uh, uh, I, I must pay respects to all Ukrainians and God help them and I hope that that conflict is soon resolved uh, because talking like this must seem so trivial to uh, the real serious and tragic events that's going on in the world. But yes, foreign interest will be there. There's no question. But let's pull a consortium together. If we can't persuade the great Sir Jim Ratcliffe to come forward, let's get a consortium. Uh, as I said, I put feelers out. I'm in touch with uh, billionaires who are interested in football. Some of them never thought of owning a football club, but I am pulling on their tail. I am saying, look, you know, uh, commercially, you know, they are good investments, so long as they're investing in the field of play, on players, they've got the right executive team in, their capital is comparatively safe. I mean, goodness me, look how the Glaziers have done so very well commercially out of our great football club. Um, we want investors to come in with the financial clout, with not having to take money out of the football club. But look, no one would begrudge them. If we're winning everything on the planet and we can see they're investing, no one begrudges any owner uh, receiving their just rewards financially, no one, uh, because it would be illogical to say it would. Uh, so look, let's work together as a Manchester United Brotherhood, all these fan groups must come together. I'm disappointed when I hear that some leaders of fan groups actually pay themselves a sal salary for, 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 for managing a fan group. Now, just a minute, hang on, what's going on here? I was there at Manchester United three years. I never took one single penny. Not one halfpenny did I take out of Manchester United. I wouldn't dream of it. I wasn't there to enrich myself for the money. Uh, yes, I would travel on the team coach, so that was a benefiting kind, of course it was. Uh, yes, I would stay in a hotel, but you know, I never took one single penny in consultants fees or wages of any description. I didn't need to, and I wouldn't want to, and I wouldn't, again, if I was there helping Manchester United with my blueprint too, I would just want to see the football club receiving the benefit of that document and those concepts, those ideas. Yes, I'm frustrated when I hear that some fan groups actually pay their administrators and executives. I don't think that's right. But we must pull all these fan groups together under one single voice 
with one small executive management team that can go forward and say, look, we've had promises, we've had fine words, we've had platitudes, but what's changed? Nothing really, nothing. Promises are hollow from what I've seen and what I've seen develop. So let's come together as a unified body with one spokesperson with their executive team to sit down with some magnificent investors of the first magnitude who have the financial clout to say, here we are, we've got the fans on board, we have the money, we'd like to regime change this football club. That is the only way, John, we can move it forward and retrieve the glory days of Alex Ferguson at Al. Let's get on with it. That's what I say. Finally then, Michael, I'm looking for a message. A message to the investors we want to come to the club to help us change the future. A message to the fans we want to unify behind this campaign. And I'm thinking you will be influenced by what we saw on the Stretford end at the Youth Cup final because we have such amazing support. How great will this club be again under the right owners? Under the right owners, we can restore it to its rightful place. Again, an arrogant statement it might be. But, you know, it is Manchester United. It should be top of the tree. No club on the planet has a divine right to be there. But if ever there was a divine right, it might just be bestowed upon Old Trafford. I must say that. Uh, simply because of the magic of the place and its history. So, what it needs is everything we've just talked about to take it back to where it should be. Because under this current ownership, I don't believe it can ever achieve those days again. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, and I, you know, I'd be the first to stand up and say, well, I was wrong if we're suddenly restored to the glory days where we were taking 38 trophies in a decade and where we were seen to be a magnificent institution with the right values, with the right qualities, with the right entertainment, under the right ownership and the right manager. Let's hope and pray that we can achieve with new owners all those things, John. And I'll play my part. I will keep talking to people. I will keep rallying. But the fans must come together. The message of this little interview, the fans must come together under one unified body with one spokesperson. Certainly doesn't have to be me, uh, but I'm happy to play that role if people want that. But it doesn't have to be me. But let's come together as one unified body with the right investors. Then the sky is literally the limit. Michael Knighton, thank you. Thank you so much for everything you've done for our football club in the past and hopefully what you're going to do in the future. Thank you, John. Lovely to see you again. God bless everyone. <laughs>